Yeah, this is the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12. Bring it out, huh? We right here. I thought, I thought he was honorable and going to do this. But so as many as received up. him, to them gave him yeah, power. Read it, John. Once you read along, read To become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Let's finish. Verse 13 is what it's all about. Verse 13, which were born, not of blood. Not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Not of the will of flesh. Nor of the will of man. Nor the will of man. But of God. That's okay. So not about Abraham. It's not about Isaac. It's it's not not about, no, no, no. You, you can't do this. this. You can't but do it. It did not say it. That's right. It okay. did not say that. Okay. No. It's we read, but you got to tell me what the text is. All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashala, and the sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right, I want to go into a lesson, all right, based on this clip from this uh, interaction that uh, Vocab Malone had with these brothers. All right, let me see if I can pull up the video again. So these brothers, uh, I just want to get their name. All right, Battle Axes of the Most High Dallas. All right, and I want to get this and go into a lesson through the spirit, touching on uh, Vocab's recent um, breakdown of John, the first chapter, particularly the 13th verse. All right, because what he tried to do you know, was he tried to say that um, basically John 1, and we'll read it as well, that John 1, 12 and 13 basically gave a license for other nations to be grafted in to the truth. Now, we know Vocab Malone has used many other scriptures to try to prove this point. Um, but I noticed that this was one of those scriptures that he tried to use against these and uh, these brothers. All right. And I want to go into a lesson on it through the spirit, because this verse and his interpretation of this verse does not negate what the brothers were saying concerning Israel and the Lord coming to save his people from their sins. All right. So I want to go into this through the spirit and we're just going to grab some precepts. All right. And Lord willing, this be edifying. All right. So let's start off with what they were reading. All right. John one. And let's start at 10. All right. And it says he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Now he's trying to use this to say, uh, we're no longer, the Lord is no longer dealing with genealogies, all right, which is far from the truth. It's extremely far from the truth. All right, but when you look at this and you examine this uh, from uh, from a spiritual perspective, you'll find out that verse 13 has nothing to do with nationality. All right. This scripture, verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the f uh, will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahweh Shemal Shai. That is the reborn. All right. Being reborn through the spirit. All right. That is that has nothing to do with the lineage being negated. All right. So let's get a precept to back that up. All right. So I want to go to John three, which is one of the most notable ones. All right. This is John three. And I'll just start at one. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahweh Shai by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except the most high be with him. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, verily, verily. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahweh Shai answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. For that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when you go into John, the first chapter in the 13th verse, when it says, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahweh Shemuel Shai, that's talking about being born of the spirit. 
All right. It doesn't mean that the Lord has negated his people, that he's forsaken his people, that he's cast off his people. Nor does it mean that other nations can be grafted into his people to receive the inheritance that was promised to the forefathers. All right. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. And, and uh, dis, uh, dispensed, so to speak, to the 12 tribes of Israel, who are the inheritors of that blessing, who are the heirs to that promise. All right. So when it says which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahweh Shemal Shai, it's not talking about the destruction of the lineage. All right. So let's get another one to back that up. All right. Let's get uh, John one and we're going to go to verse 13. And I just want to show you another translation to show you that even these uh, so-called uh, revisions, all right, point to the same point. All right. NLT reads, they are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So this is talking about being born of the spirit. All right. Even though they are by lineage, the nation of Israel, only a remnant would return. All right. This is why uh, Paul made this statement in Romans, the ninth chapter. All right. Verse six reads, not as though the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. All right. Why is that? Because some of our people um, would not accept or receive, all right, the Messiah, the Hamashiach, all right, nor would they receive this truth. And to be reborn is to be reborn of the spirit, all right, because Nicodemus asked, he said, how can a man be born again? All right, and it's like, and, and, and the Lord was saying, look, it's not of flesh. It's not about being born of the flesh. It's about being born of the spirit. All right, real quick, this is Romans chapter 12, and I'll start at 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh Shemel Shai, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh Shemel Shai, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh Shemel Shai. All right, and this is that rebirth, being reborn in the spirit. All right. By what? By the renewing of our mind. All right. This has nothing to do. All right. With the idea of um, the Lord doing away with lineage. All right. Now, as a disclaimer, our people are going to look like all nations. All right. Our people are going to look like the uh, the so-called white man. All right. They're going to look in, in appearance. All right. They're going to look like Ammonites or, you know, the Japanese or the Chinese. But their spirit is going to go back to Israel. That's why the scriptures talk about the wicked not being able to understand this. That only a remnant of the nation of Yahshua Allah would return. All right. Let's go to this. All right. Let's go to first Peter. All right. Because this again, this lesson is to focus on John 1 and 13 to highlight the uh, the understanding in its proper context. That this is not saying that the Lord has done away with lineage, but that the, the birth that's being spoken of in John 1 and 13 is the birth of the spirit. All right. The renewing of the mind, the being reborn, as, as Yahweh Shai said in John the 13th chapter. All right. So let's grab first Peter's uh, chapter one. And I want to jump down to. Man. All right. Let's start at 18 because this is beautiful. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Hamashiach as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, now pay attention. It says ye were not redeemed. The key word is redeemed. All right. Because in order for you to be read, let's get there. Let's go to first Peter's one. All right. And let's touch some of these uh, these Greek words. All right. Because this is what guys like vocab Malone and Jesus, the word. These guys use uh, the New Testament and this translation. All right. As a, to confuse our people who are already um, in a deep state of ignorance. And they use these things to deceive our people. But we understand through the spirit that ultimately the deceived and the deceiver belong to Yahweh Shemel Shai. 
And only a remnant of our people are going to be able to see through these obstacles and the veil. All right. But for edification's sake, let's go to one. And again, we're going to start at 18. And I just want to grab this word redeemed. OK. Let's go to it. Redeemed. All right. Let's see. Strong's G 3084. Lutrao. Lutrao. All right, and it says to release on receipt of ransom, to redeem, liberate by payment of ransom, to liberate, to cause to be released to oneself by payment of a ransom, to redeem, to deliver from evils of every kind, internal and external. All right, to ransom, to redeem. All right, so this says to release on receipt of ransom. All right, so those who are being redeemed, even when you go into the etymology, let me see if I can grab that as well. All right. So let's get the etymology of redeem. All right. Now, look, I'll just leave it here at the Google for the edification sake. It says from Latin re meaning back a mere by. So to buy back. All right. And that's the emphasis that's being made here to buy back. Now, when you go into first Peter's one and twenty three. All right. I'll start again at uh, 19. It says, but with the precious blood of Hamashiach. So the precious blood of Hamashiach has redeemed. These said individuals, the elect of the nation of Israel. If you can receive it, this is why vocab Malone and Jesus, the word try to deceive the people while uh, by speaking about spiritual Israel, saying spiritual Israel is really believers out of all from all the other nations that are from other nations that are literally of the tribe of other nations. And that's not the case. The Lord is gathering the elect, the remnant of his people from across the four corners. All right. Now, continuing verse uh, 20 reads, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in Yahweh by Shemel Shai that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in power. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of Yahweh by Shemel Shai which liveth and abideth forever. So this is highlighting this born again theme. All right. That is all throughout the, uh, the New Testament. And John 1 and 13 goes into the same concept. Being born again of what? Of the spirit. Being returned to the heavenly father, as it says in, uh, I believe that's Ecclesiasticus. Seek him 10 times more. That is the concept that is being pushed in John, the first chapter It's not of the Lord doing away with the nation of Israel and the seed line of Israel. And now creating this. Um, how should I say it? this multi nation nation of Israel, where it's different is literally Moabites, Ammonites that are now engrafted into the nation of Israel. That's not what the Lord is doing. This is why the scriptures talk about the, the letters of Paul being hard to understand. That most people rest to their own destruction. If the idea that people push out here that um, Paul went to literally the other nations, then his letters would not be hard to understand. But they are hard to understand when you try to fit a narrative that doesn't exist. Old Testament to New Testament precept upon precept. All right. And John, the first chapter is one of those those uh, <laughs> it's one of those latest attempts to try to uh, diminish the nation of Israel to include other nations in it, man. All right. Now, let's go back to John one. And I want to jump down again to around verse 12, because it says again, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, when you go into this, the power of becoming sons of God really goes into the adoption. All right. 
Now, the scriptures don't talk about the adoption applying to other nations, but it does specifically speak of the adoption belonging to the Israelites. All right. So let's go to. Let's go to. Uh, you know what? I'll grab Romans nine and let's jump down to. I'll start at two. All right. Nine and two that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Now, with the Christian narrative of the other nations being adopted back into uh, adopted into the family of Israel, why would the adoption apply to the Israelites? It doesn't make sense. The reason the adoption applies to the Israelites is because the Lord casted us off. And now he's adopting us back to the fold. This is why to the Israelites pertaineth the adoption. All right. Now let's go to Galatians, the fourth chapter. And I will start at. One. All right. And it reads. Now, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors unto the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh Shai sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Now, here goes another buzzword, redeem. All right. This gives you a, a, a context clue of who the scriptures are speaking of concerning redemption. All right. Again, Galatians four and five reads to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So those who were redeemed from under the law are the same ones who might receive the adoption of sons. And the, the ones who are going to receive it first and foremost are the elect. Lord willing, we're part of that number. And then the rest of the nation through uh, the, the children of the elect will receive that same adoption. But this is this is a highlighting a theme. All right. Based on the context of the scriptures, old and new. This is why the narrative all right, of the other nations being uh, brought into the nation of Israel, natural Gentiles, Gentiles of the other nations being brought into the fold does not match up with prophecy and it doesn't match up with precepts like this. With the narrative that Christianity pushes out here, all right, they push this uh, narrative that the adoption applies to literally the other nations. That if they believe whatever that means concerning the Christian uh, opinion, they can be accepted as Israelites. But the scriptures don't match up with that concept. Again, Galatians 4 and 5 reads to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, the Most High hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Come on, man. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of Yahweh Bashim Shai, or an heir of Yahweh through Yahweh Bashim Shai. Excuse me. Then an heir of Yahweh through Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. All right. So this shows you again that the adoption pertains to Yahshua Allah. It, it pertains to the Israelites who were cast off. All right. And were being brought back. This was the separation. This is why they were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. Because they had kept the customs of the other nations and they had forsaken the heritage of their fathers. And in Matthew, the 18th chapter tells you that when one of those Israelites conducts themselves in that manner and you've rebuked them, you've rebuked them before witnesses. The church has rebuked them. Then you do what? You treat him as a heathen man. All right. As a matter of fact, for edification, we're just going to grab that. 
All right. It may be John 18. Let me see. Oh, here it is. All right. Matthew 18 and 15. And it reads, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. And the scene that Yahweh was walking into, it, this was this was lived by. This was law. And what I mean by that was that this is what the majority of those of the circumcision live by. If you weren't keeping the customs, you were considered a heathen in the eyes of those who kept the customs of our fathers. John, the first chapter and the 13th verse does not negate what was promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob concerning their seed, their bloodline. It doesn't negate that. All right. And when you look at it again, but as many as received him, John 1 and 12, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All right. Now, that doesn't mean. All right. Verse 13 says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. All right. That doesn't mean that the Lord has gotten rid of his own people. This is telling you that that rebirth is going to be a spiritual one. And when you look at it from that perspective, but through the spirit, you can tell how um, how vocab Malone uses subtility. All right. He he uses uh, verses that Jake isn't unfamiliar with in the heat of battle to try to confound. But you can't get around the scriptures in their totality. And this is why Christianity tries to grab and isolate particular scriptures to, to highlight their narrative that doesn't fit precept upon precept. There's more holes, all right, than solutions concerning the doctrine of Christianity, and that's just plain. All these scriptures about the other nations going into captivity under the nation of Israel. And then you have the Christian doctrine that pushes this narrative that now all you have to do is just believe on uh, Jesus Christos. No, you don't have to uh, strive to offend less. You don't have to keep the commandments to the best of your ability. You don't have to establish the law. It's done away with completely. You just have to say that you believe, even though James tells you, show me thy faith without thy works and I'll show you uh, uh, my faith by my works. Those works aren't talking about just feeding the homeless, man. Scriptures talk about this is the love that we keep the Lord's commandments. So even if you even if you do this narrative of we just believe and now we're going to be accepted by the Heavenly Father, it's not just in word. It has to be in deed. And this is why they reject the uh, understanding that you have to keep the law to the best of your ability as well. These are two major amongst many, but these are two major contentions that show you that they're not following the scriptures precept upon precept. All right. And John, the first chapter and the 13th verse is just another um, ploy that vocab Malone uses to isolate. First, it was Agrippa. Then it was, I believe it was Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Then it was Isaiah 49. Now is John 1 and 13 and uh, 13 about which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And he's saying that ends genealogy. And this is the furthest thing from the truth, man. All right. And the scriptures go into this extensively. All right. You have uh, this narrative that the Lord's uh, people didn't accept him. And that was that was a part of prophecy. All right. But many believed on Hamashiach. All right. Many believed of the nation of Israel. All right. Not just in general, but of the nation of Israel. All right. Let's go to uh, John since we're here. John chapter 11 and verse 45. 
All right. And it reads. I'll start at 44. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And this is going into Lazarus. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Yahweh saith unto them, loose him and let him go. Verse 45 reads, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yahweh did believed on him. So the contrary to popular belief, the entire nation of, of Israel that were in the land of Judea did not. Re the entire nation didn't reject Yahweh man. There were many that believed on him. And the Christian narrative that he, he went to his own, his own knew him not. All right. Was it all of the nation of Israel? All right. Matter of fact, if I could find it. Yep. So lucky. Like, I'm just trying to find the best one. Yep, here we go. The Wadi Haba Shemel Shah. This is Mark chapter 8. And I will start at verse 29. And he says, And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and saith unto him, Thou art the Hamashiach. All right, thou art Hamashiach. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected. Of the elders and of the chief priest and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Now, I want to highlight that to show you that it says that he was going to be rejected of who? The elders, the chief priests and the scribes. And then you had other regular Israelites who rejected the Lord as well. But I'm highlighting a point that the entire nation that was in the land of Judea, Judea of the southern kingdom. All right which were predominantly the ones that were in the land of Israel during the time of Hamashiach. The entire nation didn't reject him. Many believed on him. But you have these Christian doctrines that are really just holding on for dear life. Like they, you know, every every couple months, they, they find something that they could try to come out and use and then they get confounded again. And then they go crawl back in the hole and regroup. Pinky in the brain. What are we going to do today, uh, uh, Pinky? Same thing we do every day. All right. And they can't they can't. You can neither gain, say, nor resist this word, man. All right. And John, the first chapter is a it's very simple through the spirit. When you understand the proper context. All these scriptures about the Lord only dealing with his people. And then you have Christianity who still believes that they can try to confound what's being done you can't matter of fact let's go to that you can't you're, you're fighting against the lord man here it is the lord's people are beginning to wake up and you have these guys vocab malones and and, and men minions like him that their whole purpose they don't even edify their people anymore their whole purpose now is just to try to follow around hebrew israelites to try to confound hebrew israelites Guys like Vocab Malone, it's not even about the doctrine no more. Now it's just about super chats, views, and, and uh, controversy. Individuals like this do videos on nothing else. If what we're saying is so absurd, why would you leave off completely from teaching what you believe to try to confound another belief system? Acts 5, and I'll start at 35, all right? And this is Gamaliel, all right, for those who, don't, who aren't aware, all right? Now, this is the counsel that they were having concerning the followers of Hamashiach, the apostles, all right? Now, you know, I'll start at 34. Acts 5 and 34 reads, Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, and this shows you that all the Pharisees weren't wicked. All right. Just a sidebar. A doctor of the law had a reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves. What ye intend to do is touching these men. 
For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. And after this rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of Yahweh Shai, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against Yahweh Shimao Shai. All right, so what's happening is you have a lot of people through the spirit that are trying to fight, and they believe that they're fighting against men, but you're really fighting against the Heavenly Father. That's why the scripture said they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them, man. You can't just isolate one scripture. Maybe you could have did that in the eight in, in the I, I can't even say the eighties or nineties. Maybe you could have did that once upon a time, but now that this truth is literally flooding the planet, you can't get away with that anymore. And this is why Vocab Malone may put on this uh, bravado like he's in control and he's confident. Really, his dedication is a witness that this is the truth, whether he understands that or not. And all he's doing is he's being used as a tool to spread this message. You had a brother that did a video. You know, I saw the title. I didn't get a chance to watch the whole video, but he said, you know, all news is um, all news is good news. Something of that effect. And it's true. All of these things are being because you can't fight against the Lord. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And all he's doing with all of his cameras and and his his ability to fly from different towns and different cities. All he's doing is putting a light on this truth, man. Because there may be some of the elect that may be watching his platform as opposed to as opposed to the platform that the Lord set up through us. Beginning with our apostles on down. The different brothers that teach the like minded doctrine. There may be some Israelites that are in the Christian church that may pass by one of his videos and see what's being said. And it starts to make sense to them. And through the spirit, that's exactly what's happening on one shape, form or fashion, whether we're able to see it and, 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 and um, witness it ourselves or whether it's being done through the spirit and poverty by Shemel Shai in a way that's not as visible. But he's being used just like Sarnetta. These individuals that come up to the truth to scoff, all right, to try to gainsay, to try to resist. What they're actually doing is using their platforms to bring forth the truth to another audience. But, you know, through the spirit, I just want to go into that. All right. Lord willing, that was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word, and all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.